I'm Ryan Curtright with Symmetrics. I'm a technical sales engineer there. I handle support and pre-sales calls. I'm here today to give you a demonstration and cover some of the key new features and benefits of our new Simnet Composer 2.0 software that should be released um, very soon. So I'm going to just hop right in. Some of the features I'll just cover and make sure that uh, I tell you what they do, show you how maybe what it looks like. Other uh, features, I'll open up Simnet Composer and give you a live demo. Um, moving on, I'm just going to do a quick rundown, I guess, of at least uh, kind of the three of the big key ticket items and but we'll look at everything individually and and um, all of the different uh, features that we've added so some key features the first thing to notice is that we've now added uh, Dante third-party device integration into some net composer um, so this means that you can now uh, program and set up third-party Dante products inside a Composer without ever leaving Composer. Um, most notably right now, there's the uh, Tarot Tech pieces and the Stuart Audio uh, amps as well. Um, but we certainly are open to adding other third-party devices to the platform. So if you're maybe a, a user of Sure and you use their ULXD series, Dante series mics, and you'd like to be able to program them in Composer, um, we certainly encourage you to talk to their reps and uh, get them into communication with us. And, you know, whatever Dante third-party product you think would be um, handy to just be integrated in the way I'll show you here in a little bit. Um, we also give you the ability to just actually uh, browse the Dante network in general, see a unit that is on the network, say, hey, I want to receive these channels from this unit. So no need to open up Dante Controller, find a network name, and those types of things. So we'll look at that a little more uh, in depth here in a few minutes. We added a new DSP module called the Transient Suppressor that gets rid of things like, you know, somebody tapping a pen on a desk or clanking a mic or, silverware flopping around on a conference desk, those types of things, it will clean up that audio from the microphones. We've also added TCP IP control capabilities, um, and then that's duplex communication, so we can receive TCP IP commands from third-party devices. We can also send TCP IP commands to third-party devices. So we'll look at how that works. And then there's a bunch of workflow enhancements um, that will certainly reduce design time and help keep you organized. So let's go ahead and look at uh, these in full. And once again, for more information, feel free to go to our website at www.symmetrics.co. And most notably, that's not .com, it's .co as in company. So the first thing we'll look here is uh, the new feature that supports the Aterotech and Dante uh, Stuart Audio Dante enabled devices. Um, right here, this diagram on the bottom shows you kind of the existing SimNet universe in uh, Composer 2.0. The first three boxes here on the left we see is the edge frame. This is a four card slot, open card slot box. Has no native I.O. and you can load any of our available cards into it. So you see this one has a four channel AEC card, a four channel mic or line level input card, a four channel line level output card and a four channel digital output card which could would support AES EBU or SPDIF. There's a SIMNET radius 12 by 8 that's 12 micro line level inputs and eight level a line level outputs and we also have the radius AEC which is eight micro line level inputs that have AEC or acoustic echo canceling capabilities. Four line level media inputs and eight line level outputs with an open card slot. So you'll see in this box it's been loaded with the telephone hybrid card. Um, there's also SimNet endpoints. These are the XN12 and the XOUT12. Um, the XN12 adds 12 channels of analog audio and throws them onto Dante. The XOUT12 can receive 12 channels from Dante and send them out line level outputs. And we also have an X control. This is adding GPIO, like pots, contact closures, and switches to make something trigger in SimNet. And there's logic outputs as well.
The, now we've also added the Aterotech endpoint devices. Um, here you see two of them, that's the DX2IO and then there's the DIO 2x2. Both of them will show up just like other endpoints in our system. Um, also we have added Steward Audio endpoints, here you see two of them. There's actually three models supported in the new Composer 2.0 software. Um, so I will show you those now and how those are set up. Um, the ma most notable thing is that the uh, Aterotech and the Steward Audios act as if they're a combo box or they're acting as if they're an XIN12 or an XOUT12, although they only have two channels in or out. Um, let's go ahead and look at that in SimNet Composer. So I'm going to go to Composer. Oops. Go to Composer here. Um, if I was to drag out an edge and connect to an edge, which you have to have one of our DSPs, um, it d acts as a conductor and does all the communication between endpoints, including our XIOs, but also with the Aterotech pieces. And if I drag a Aterotech in here and click on the box, I can then locate it just as I would a like an XN12. So now I see the Aterotech, it's the DIO 2x2, and I see its MAC address and IP address on the Dante network. Just double click on it, and I should get a green check. Once I've got a green check, you'll notice that it has these two outputs, so that, that would be where I would route Dante Audio to it. Let's see, and if I come to the Dante transmits in the uh, edge, I'll see that now I have the two channels from the the uh, two by two here at Tarotech two by two to drag in. So now I could receive audio from that box. And likewise, if I had a two channel, let's say transmit, I could call this to um, a Tarotech. Make it two channels. So here's flow one, flow two. Of course, I could wire it to whatever I wanted in the system. And now when I come over to the Aterotech here, I could double click and say, here's this two Aterotech, and I want these two channels, and I click OK. Now I have those two channels routed to this uh, Aterotech piece. And like I said, very similar to, say, setting up an XN12. If I wanted to set up an XN12, I'd drag it in, double click on it, and pick the XN12 off the network. So exact same steps for programming in a tarot tech as it is for an XN12 or an XOUT12. And if I go to this XN12's properties and hit con configure inputs, here's where I could set the mic presettings or line level settings, turn on phantom power. Likewise, in the tarot tech, if I double click on it and click configure a tarot tech, here I see my two input channels with their mic presettings and phantom power and the output channels being able to set it to a line level expectation or an unbalanced level expectation. Um, just to show you the pieces that are supported then, we have the 2x2 two two for a tarot tech and the 2x2 two two IO. And uh, as far as the steward audio pieces go, we have the AV25-2. Two, two um, in fact, I have one of these next to me, so let's go ahead and discover it. Here we see it shows up as an Ultimo um, chip. That's its network name for Dante, and this is the type of device it is, MAC address and uh, IP address on the Dante network. And then we have CV, the CVA50-1 and the NetAV2x2 um, as well. So all of these boxes now can be programmed and configured within SimNet Composer just as if they're a SimNet box. And once again I'll mention you have a Dante product that you use a lot of if it's you know not exclusive or they don't have their own uh, DSP then it might be worth asking them um, you know if they talk to us and possibly we could add them to our platform and just create that seamless integration between endpoints um, much easier for everybody. Now a third thing to note is, and we'll go ahead and look on the uh, PowerPoint, but the next thing, and here we're seeing this slide shows what we just went over, setting up the Aterotech. Um, but the third, uh, or the second feature I want to show you is just that we now have the ability to browse the Dante network. So you see cr the creation of a receive flow here. Receive, we'd say existing, and before we'd have to go look in Dante controller to see a network name like this, uh, UNDX2IO dash, and then it's probably a MAC address there. Um, we would have to find that network name in Dante controller. 
then load, you know, type that in manually, and then name our channels based upon whatever channels we saw in that box. So, what we've done in uh, Design or in Composer now is giving you the ability when you create the receive flow to go receive say third-party device and then browse for whatever third-party device now it's not showing me it will actually show me the whole Dante network I don't have a lot of Dante devices on here but it's going to show me devices that aren't already connected so I'm not going to see the um, well actually I can I can enable this and now I'll see oh there's the uh, Tarot Tech there's the Stewart Audio, there's an XN12. You see there's an XN12 I haven't programmed, that's why it shows in the list when this checkbox is checked. But you'll notice what's cool is any unit I click on, I'm going to see what channels it's sending. Um, that guy maybe is not set up already. Let's see. Okay, so this, uh, that's just the Stewart Audio amp, so it has no inputs. That's why I didn't see any inputs from it. But if we see we have inputs and I say, oh, this is the device I'd like to receive and I'd like to receive those channels, I can just double click on it. It grabs that channel name. Um, likewise, if I wanted, I can also do a multi-select. So I could say I want this from this device and I want both channels and click create unicast flow. Now I have both those channels. Um, that can be used to receive audio from, this feature could be used to receive audio from, um, SIMNet devices that are in another site file. Uh, it could also be used to receive audio, Dante Auto from the Dante Virtual Sound Card, from Yamaha devices, Allen and Heath mixers. I mean, you name it. Anybody that uses Dante, you're going to see it in this browse window if it's on the same Dante network. You click on a unit, and then you just tell it how many channels or what channels you want to receive, up to eight channels at a time. And it's pretty easy to swap what you're receiving from. So um, certainly a great time-saving feature and, and of course that eliminates the need to not only have Dante controller open but in some cases you know the Dante and the control network are on separate networks so you had to bridge the com control network with the Dante network in order to have Dante controller open at the same time you have SimNet Composer open and now you don't need to do that. You can actually just use con Composer to scan the Dante network for you and receive the audio you want. Where you will need uh, to use Dante Controller, of course, is if we're sending audio to a third-party device that's not supported in Composer, we can't go tell it what to do. So you're limited as far as telling third-party devices what Dante to receive from Cement to the Aterotech pieces and the Stuart Audio pieces now. For instance, you wanted a Yamaha LS9 to receive channels from, you know, maybe this flow here that's called to Aterotech, I'd have to open up Dante Controller and click those cross points into the LS9. But for the most part, uh, I think you know that feature should streamline a lot of routing with the Dante Audio. Moving on, we now added a label feature so that the system will relabel downstream signals for you. Um, let's look at that real quick. I'll go ahead and just add a couple modules like for instance, if we call this mic one, and maybe this is mic two. This is PGM one. PGM. So I just create a couple labels, and I'll show you how this works. Like, let's say I wanted to go through a four-channel gain module, and here I'll do the multi-wire. I hit four wire, four wires at once, and then maybe that goes to some four by eight matrix mixer. And of course, going module by module, relabeling everything can be um, you know, fairly tedious. Now you can right-click the module that has the labels and say relabel all downstream devices. It says, are you sure you want to do this? Because it will overwrite previously um, labeled um, inputs. But I click yes, and now I can see my gain as mic 1, 2, and BGM 1 and 4. And so does the matrix mixer. Of course, it doesn't follow to the outputs because the outputs are going to then feed some other outs. But once again, if I wanted to, I could label these, and I call this like lobby, and maybe this is like my hallway, and this is grand ball one, something like that. I could have it then relabel from the output side of things to the other outs. So I could say relabel all downstream devices and click OK, and now I see my lobby, hall, grand ballroom labels on the outputs 
So it does allow you some really quick relabeling in your system to keep everything very organized, and you don't have to do it you know, input by input.